Hello, my fair friends. I'm Ruby Roos. This is Baby Bunny, and welcome to Fairy Fortunes. On today's show, we are going to be continuing our series on mythology, the ABCs of mythology. Uh, if you have missed my previous videos, I will have a link down below to the playlist, so I hope that you will check out some of these previous videos. So today, we are continuing with the letter F. And today is a very important day because today we're discussing the mythology of the fairy faith. So from some dictionaries that I came across, the definition of a myth is a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people or explaining a natural or social phenomenon and typically involving supernatural beings. Hmm. Very exciting. So when we look at folklore in that context, in excuse me, in that context, we're looking at that falls within the category of that supernatural being. And also the fairy faith throughout history has been a way for society, human society to explain certain phenomenon, whether it be a natural phenomenon or something in a social context that helped them define their world. So to move on, I'm going to now give a definition of folklore. And here we have traditional customs, tales, sayings, dances, or art forms that are preserved among a people. So here we're talking about customs, whereas a myth, mythology, is related to stories and explaining phenomenon. So I would say that the fairy faith fits into both folklore, because there are many charms and practices and things that go with dealing with the fae folk. And then there is the stories and the explanation of social phenomenon that is connected to belief in creatures who are not human. I would like to share a definition of a fairy tale which I collected from a quote by an author who specializes in folklore and mythology, and her name is Jacqueline Simpson, so if you have the opportunity to look up some of her work, I would highly recommend that. And she explains a fairy tale like this. So author Jacqueline Simpson says that fairy tales are mostly told for entertainment, whereas folklore is concerned with those supernatural forces as real entities. I love that she says real entities, because fairies are real. I would hope so, because I, I don't think I'm a figment of my own imagination. Moving on. Supernatural, anyway, she's con folklore is concerned with supernatural forces as real entities to be reckoned with in the everyday world and not as just as material for entertainment. I really love that definition of a fairy tale. Now, I would argue that there is a great deal to be learned and gained by exploring fairy tale, but this series, uh, the rules of this series, because I am actually doing this project as a challenge with the YouTube Pagans, which you can find their group on Facebook, and I will have a link for you down below. Uh, the rules with the mythology challenge is that you really had to focus on not fairy tales, but a mythology, and not a newer mythology, but an ancient one. Now, I'm breaking a lot of those rules. Well, I'm not breaking them. I'm kind of bending them, as fairies do. So, uh, the other thing is, is that I really wanted to give you a mythology series that was heavily connected with the fae, the fair folk, and thus, because that is what fairy fortunes is all about, is taking fairy folklore and mythology and putting it in a modern context and making it a part of the modern world. 
So beyond that, let's move on and talk about fairy beings around the world. The reason that I wanted to bring this up is that if you have watched my series on the Fairy Fortune cards, which I have another playlist and I will link that down below in the description, uh, I have spent a great deal of time uh, interacting and meeting and uh, studying other fairy creatures from around the world and different cultures. Uh, so I have taken aspects of those beings and, and put them in my system for divination. Fairy creatures are really found in every corner of human society. So each culture has a tale of otherworldly beings, beings that are sentient and absolutely not human. Well, there is a storm warning siren going off in the background, so we just may have to push through that. Uh, welcome to summer in the American Midwest. All right. So let's talk about the entomology of the word fairy and what that might have come from. So there's a lot of speculation about where the term fairy comes from. Now, it is very, uh, in, in older times, uh, you did not refer to uh, supernatural beings like myself as a fairy that was considered to be dangerous and rude, and fairies didn't like that. What I can tell you is that it has become kind of a euphemism. And uh, I, for one, have embraced that label, and uh, I am not offended by that. Uh, just be warned that if you do encounter a fae creature, a fairy being, that you make sure that you ask them what they would like to be called. <laughs> Some have names. So you can call me, hey fairy, I might look at you, but then if I introduce myself and say my name is Ruby Ruse, I would suggest that you use my name, Ruby Rose. Moving on. So, and, th and that is just, that's just considered polite in just general society. It's, it's understandable to make a mistake. Uh, it, humans are completely different and many are experimenting with all of these amazing uh, forms of body modification. So we have gentlemen that are just stunningly beautiful with their eye makeup, and we have ladies that prefer not to wear makeup. And it's very easy to make a mistake and use an incorrect label, even in human society. So the polite thing to do is if you do make a mistake or if you're unsure, just acknowledge that and ask what they prefer to be addressed as. That's really the best practice in both humans and in the fae world. So let's go back. So uh, it was very common that a fairy was a, a shortened version of the fair folk. An, an older version of the word fair meant fair of face. If you were fair of face, that meant that you were beautiful. And so fairy creatures were considered extremely beautiful to look at, and of course many of them are. Um, I personally think that goblins might not fall under their face, but don't tell them that I said that. Um, yes. So, but a fairy was referring to that being that was beautiful, that was fair of face. So that is one uh, possible meaning of the word fairy, is it was a shortened version of that. There is also speculation that the word comes from a Latin word, feata, which is related to our modern word of fate. So that these fairy creatures, these, these beings that were not humans, uh, were, were more in tune with the flow of fate the flow of fortune in that 
if you think of fate as an entity all on its own, that it's like a river that flows through our environment, uh, like energy, it's a type of energy. Uh, the fairy creatures are more adept at following that flow and, and feeling that flow, and as I do in divination, what divination really is, in my opinion, is that it's a way to tap into that flow of fate, is that we're looking at the patterns of fate when we use a form of divination. So, I also, you'll hear me often talk about fairy beings as the fae. Uh, fae is another shortened version, they think, of this word feata, uh, which was a way to, to talk, to identify and, um, and, and designate that we are not talking about a human, we are talking about, and we're not talking about like an animal here, like bunny, we're talking about something that is not human, but shares some characteristics of that and actually goes beyond that, becoming more like a divine figure that is above humans. And as, as I talked about in my first video on Arthurian mythology, is that actually Arthur's sister was named Morgan Le Fay, meaning Morgan of the Fairy. So she was considered to be of the fairy realm. So that is where the word comes from. And as I said earlier, is that every culture from around the world has at least one story of a type of being that is not human, has extraordinary powers of some kind, and is not quite a god, but is almost revered in that way. The reason that I think that folklore and mythology might be interchangeable terms, to some extent, because we're we're looking at the traditional stories of fairy creatures in a way to attempt to explain natural and social phenomenon that happened in older times. Now, particularly in the Celtic stories of fairy creatures, there are multiple stories of fairies being responsible for stealing away children. So, now, I like children. I do like them. I really don't need to be surrounded by them at all times. <laughs> so I, I'm really not interested in, in stealing your children. So where did that, that idea that fairies are responsible for stealing children come from? Like what could that have possibly represented? And I think the mythology of that is that you have to appreciate before there was the modern medicine that we have in our modern age now with penicillin and uh, healthcare practices and now we have clean water and we're working on pollution and making sure that the environment is studied and cared for in older times, that really was not something that was readily available to the populace. They didn't have that kind of information, and they certainly didn't have things like penicillin. And even basic hygiene was not something that really was feasible to do in some areas of countries and in older times. We didn't have modern plumbing, that kind of thing. Because we didn't have the kinds of things that we have now, is that there was an even higher mortality rate in children than there is right now. So I think that really the mythology of fairies was a way to explain 
what had happened to these children. It was a beautiful story if you think that your beautiful child that you loved and wanted that suddenly died for probably mysterious reasons. It was probably easier and more beautiful to think that that child had been taken away to live with the fairy creatures who would honor that child and love that child as you would have done yourself. So I think that those stories were created to give meaning to that child's death. And so that, especially to me, is an example of mythology and not folklore, which is a custom in the idea of a child passing away and then going to live with the fairies. That, I think, is more mythology because it explains that natural and social phenomenon and really gives meaning to that challenging happening. So in, a, so in addition to the Fae helping to explain social and natural phenomenon in, ancient, in older times, you could argue that some fairy creatures were actually honored in a godlike context. Um, when Christianity moved in and was pushing out the old belief in fairies, uh, it was very difficult to get, especially the rural people, to not believe that these beings didn't exist. <laughs> I have many opinions about why that is. Uh, maybe because they exist. Um, so there were many stories that, that fairy creatures were fallen angels, that when Lucifer was removed from heaven and had his fall, that there were fairies that fell, there were beings rather, that fell with him that were not as vile as he was in his minions, but they were expelled from heaven and they were the ones that became the fair folk. They were the, the ones that were beautiful of face, they were the shining ones, they were angels. Now, Christianity is infinitely much, much younger than fairy faith tradition, so that is a lovely story, that is, uh, that it would be considered mythology of fairy, <laughs> but I, I'm here to debunk that. We were here first. My point is, is that fairy creatures were given a kind of divine form, and it was very common, actually, to, uh, in a sense, pray to these beings. You, you didn't ask a god to help you in certain cases because the god was too far removed from the situation. So, for example, if you were looking for water, you wouldn't pray to a god, you would actually pray to fairy beings that were associated with water to help you find water. Another thing is, is that fairy creatures were often given offerings, and what's interesting about that is that some of these offerings persist even today in modern culture. So if, so for instance, the act of a wishing well, what is a wishing well? Well, that is actually an ancient fairy offering. Uh, what uh, it was, fairy creatures associated with water are were often um, very in tune with that structure of fate that I was talking about because water and fate were associated together. They are associated together because that there is that element of fate acting as a river. So water fairies particularly were a part of that fate flow, if you will. So the best fairy spirit that you would want to contact when you had something that you were hoping for for the future, a wish that you wanted to have happen in your, in your fate, you would consult a water fairy. And so the practice would be is that 
you would throw an offering into a well. And that is where our wishing wells today come from, is that you, you tell the fairy your desire, and then you give them the coin as a gift so that they will hopefully grant your wish. So another practice that we still see in modern times is the act of tying ribbons around trees. Uh, when ribbons are tied around trees, usually we are doing that as a remembrance of people. That is a common practice uh, done often during Memorial Day where we tie ribbons around trees to remember those warriors that have given their lives to protect their countries. Uh, another time was in the 70s, we had a terrible hostage situation in the Americas, and people were tying yellow ribbons around trees as a remembrance of those hostages. And where does that come from? That comes from the ancient practice of giving the gift of a ribbon to those tree spirits, those forest fairies, in hopes that they will protect that loved one that you are trying to remember. So anytime a loved one of your family would be going on a journey, you would then go to the forest or perhaps go to a tree that was on the path of the person that they were going to take on their journey, and you would give a ribbon to the forest spirits, to those forest fairies, in hopes that your gift would then incline them to help protect that person on their journey. So as you can see, some of these customs, some of these traditions are still persisting in this day and age. And actually there is a live and thriving religion called the fairy faith. Now, like Wicca, the fairy faith is actually kind of a new tradition. Uh, it actually appeared, it seems, in the 1970s. Now, people sometimes argue about Wicca and the fairy faith is that these are ancient traditions, uh, but really what we're seeing today is not ancient. They are borrowing from those ancient stories, those mythologies, those pieces of folklore, but it is a borrowing, it is not, um, because those, what happened back then has, was really not a tradition that was written down in any form, and so this is just a new creation based on those ancient practices, but it is something that I truly believe is entirely new. But just because it's new does not mean that it is in any way invalid. So if you would like to know more about the fairy faith, there are many places. Uh, please check my resources down below. Um, the fairy craft book that I have in the resources is a great resource to get a snapshot picture of what the fairy faith incorporates. And if you want to learn how to practice that, that would be a resource that I would recommend. The fairy faith symbol is actually a seven-spired star. So, and there are many places uh, that do follow a fairy path tradition, and I encourage you to seek some of out those organizations. Um, the fairy faith, what I can tell you is that they're very connected to environmentalism and promoting the health of the earth and is really something that I feel is necessary and needed in this world today. So that is my argument based on that fairy faith is actually not folklore. There are folklore elements and that there are customs happening, but also the fairy belief structure, both ancient and modern, is actually a mythology because these traditional stories of the fae 
gave broader meaning and context to social and natural happenings in the ancient world and today as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope that you will give Bunny and I a thumbs up and do stay tuned because we will be continuing this mythology series. And with that, have a fairy full day.